空賊に行くことは浮気かどうかっていうどう思いますか浮気じゃない浮気じゃない So the question was Does in paying for it Does that count as cheating? And both of these Both of these ladies said It does not 気持ちの浮気は嫌なんですけど、まあ、性欲の浮気は別に<笑><笑> They said it's more about the feeling But I don't care if it's just as sex as ex Okay? Craziness <laughs> I'd rather they go to a p than talk to random girls. I told my boyfriend. So this, 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 this girl gave instructions. I told my boyfriend to go to a process if you want to cheat. Cheating is considered normal things and very common things. To do in Japanese dating culture and also marriage culture. Especially for marriage couple, cheating is so common that I almost want to puke. For example, going to prostitution is okay things to do, even though you're in a relationship. A lot of Japanese men go into a place with their co worker or their boss after their work with the company money. With the company money. This is a sickness of the highest order. Eh? Sounds really f up, but it's super common, and everybody do that. Uh, so there's an article that says, "Why do do why do eighty percent of women in Japan think cheating is healthy?" And there's a whole article about this entire process and just how their paradigm around this is different. And then uh, Abba and Preach. Pull up some interviews of different guys kind of going, explaining how this is different. Okay, now again, there's a point here that ABBA reached, that, that ABBA makes that, that completely blew my mind. The fact that he picked up on this and how clearly he stated this. Cheating is very much normalized in Japan, which I always thought was really, really weird. You can't cheat on a wife, but if you have a girlfriend, it's okay to cheat. What do you think, Jeff? It sounds like they're okay with, that the, the cheating on wives is normal. Not just girlfriends, according to what the previous girl just said. Japanese people do them. This idea of getting into relationships is just so strongly pushed down your throat. A lot of people just want the status of being in a relationship, but aren't, for the most part, committed to it. Wow. And then they, they, they interview a bunch of guys, and, and they ask the guys if, you know, cheating is okay. <laughs> yes, that doesn't include me. <laughs> so they go on and yes, ask all these Japanese guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, craziness. This is crazy. But check out, check out the revelation that Abba makes later on in the video. That I was like, this is, this is so good and so profound. Now, remember, uh, love Abba and Preach. Preach grew up a Christian. Uh, Abba grew up a Muslim. I don't know where they are with God and their worldview now. Uh, we've been friendly over DMs, and we talked about potentially doing something on my channel. But listen to what Abba says, and listen to the revelation that Abba makes. This is so interesting, okay? Yeah, I think it is the part of like nature versus nurture. And I think for a lot of us, we just nature assume that the, uh, that the not being okay with cheating is inherently just nature. When in reality, a lot of it is nurture. It's how so he's saying nature versus nurture. Now, 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 you know that a lot of people, especially in some of these red pill spaces, advocate for men will like variety, yada, yada, yada. Men can, you know, spread their across multiple women and it's in their best interest and so if you're just looking at it strictly from a quote-unquote evolutionary standpoint then therefore uh it, it's well within reason why do why dudes would do this okay but listen to abba explain why nurture and nature matters in this right this is very very profound listen to what he says our culture shapes us oh. you know we grew up with judeo-christian values here in the west and so a lot of that comes from the church and then is disseminated downward through generation and generation mm -hmm. he said that in the West, we grow up with Judeo-Christian values through the church that then gets disseminated down. And so our worldview around this stuff is totally different. Japan is not a country that had Judeo-Christian values for, you know, thousands of years. Fair. And a lot of other countries who don't share that same, you know, religious standpoint will not necessarily have those same values. Now, wow. does that mean it's all culture? Of course not. There's perfectly reasonable. Okay, so before we go into the perfectly reasonable natural aspect, this is a, an astute observation from ABBA, okay, that when countries don't, aren't as connected to the Judeo-Christian worldview, specifically uh, in my experience, where uh, we were culturally Armenian, 
Okay, uh, I'm sorry, we were, we were Armenian, so we were culturally Christian. Therefore, the overtaking of communism over parts that were culturally Christian, specifically Armenia, and then w- w- went on to be Azerbaijan, I would agree with his statement that even growing up in, in, in the Soviet Union, we didn't rectify faith and connect it to our, 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 our fidelity, our sobriety, right? And so if you ever know anyone, and again, folks that came from communistic countries, Soviet communistic countries, especially back then, you will find a lot, a lot of adultery. You will find a lot of abuse of alcohol because the zeitgeist of the government took over folks's, and this is like culturally Christian people. Armenians are culturally Christian. They grew up, it's the oldest Christian nation, but the zeitgeist of the government for a season at least, I think it's changed now, definitely took over. And so this stuff was prevalent, right? This stuff was prevalent. It was it was common for people to cheat on each other. It was common for everyone in the culture to, to beat uh, to, to beat women and fight physically. It was common in the culture for, for them to abuse alcohol. The influence of faith on culture versus the word of God being read, written in our hearts, right? The word of God being written in our hearts, conscious, conscious, right? As Romans 2 says, okay? So, uh, but listen to why, he's, listen to the, the, the natural uh, order that he lays out for why uh, uh, monogamy and not cheating is also beneficial. Nature related reasons why women would not want their partners to cheat for thousands of years. It meant like, you know, if they're sleeping with other women, when they have other kids, then they neglect your family and the family that you've built with that man, that's right. right? And that's so that's right. why those women spoke about one thing. What do they speak about? Don't go have emotional connections. Don't go leaving me for somebody else. Mm. They don't want their position threatened. That's the nature part that exists everywhere where it's like, yeah, you know, you might be okay with prostitution, right? The guys that nurture the cultural aspect, but you're not okay with just full-on cheating with that because naturally you don't want your place in that dynamic to be lost. It's not even considered cheating, as a matter of fact, because there's yeah. no... It's not in either party's best interest to cheat it's not better it's not it's not ideal in the woman's interest to cheat because it's going to be harder for ha- for her to have a, a a man to to stick around and it's not it's not good in the guy's decision to cheat because he isn't there to if we're talking just straight natural selection and, and, and what is best for our species you cannot you cannot if, if if the natural way people are wired is to further our species the best way to do that is through monogamy. It is through monogamy because you want to stick around to see your offspring thrive and, and live. It is through monogamy. And so like, because it's, it's much more to being a father than just having the baby, right? You want to make sure that n- no one else comes in and and, and, and and takes out your kids. I'm, I'm, I'm talking very, right? Like, so we're talking about this from a, from a nature standpoint. That's how that would look. So anyway, anyway, I thought that ex- that was extremely fascinating. But yes, I do think when we remove when we remove the Judeo Christian worldview from society, this is where things lead. They 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 can come off the rails very fast. Now, this isn't an indictment of all J- uh, Japanese people or anything like that. It's just a very interesting observation by someone that's not even a Christian, as far as I know, in respect to how much Christian teaching influences non Christians living. In a, in a society that is influenced by the church, right? That's that's fascinating. And I, again, that's another one of those, like, that's a, that's a net positive. We see, according to the Bible, that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf and two it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that i was praying for and see the hand of god tangibly in my life when he answers them so i would urge you consider writing down your prayers it could be in a blank notebook it could even be on your phone or you could check out the one i personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that i think will be a huge blessing it's the exact structure and system that i've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. And here's the thing, with the hope to create a prayer movement, we've made the PDF version of this prayer journal completely free. So to get the PDF of our prayer journal completely for free, go to blessgodpdf.shop now.